Hi, it's Chris, and welcome back to Something Else Sort of Amiga. What do we have on the show today? Well, it's freezing cold in my basement, and I figured what a better way to heat up the basement than to fire up an old cheese grater G5 Mac Pro Dual 2 and put Morph OS on it. But, I haven't turned this on in a long time. Matt 3K has been bugging me to do a Morph OS video, so Matt, this one's for you, buddy. Okay, so, <clears throat> long story short, many moon ago, I built a Morph OS workstation out of a Power Mac G5 with, accordance to the Morph OS team, website specifications of what works the best. I paid 68 US dollars to register at the time. Don't know when. It was 3.15 something, maybe. Now they're on 318. Not too long ago on a revision land, just point two. So I'm going to fire this up, if it still works. I'm going to use a PC keyboard. We're going to inspect what we got. Last time this was running, it was my server. Or before it was Morph OS. It was my server. Had a 120 gig OCZ PIO mode old SATA SSD. It also had a 4 channel SATA adapter and a dual fiber NIC for my server, or for my XServe, which should still be in here. Power Macs are great, you just flip one switch, down she comes. This is the same for the Intel models also. There's a rubber gasket around here, and this is a plastic dust cover that comes out. It has a photo cell right here, so if this is moved, all the fans turn on turbo and the lights go to red to let you know this is out of the case. You can get around this by shoving a piece of paper down this hole, and I'll show you, this plastic has a white translucent paint on that one right here. She's a little dirty. Hadn't turned on in forever. Dual G5, I broke the tabs off, pulling heat sinks out and put new thermal paste on. So I just put some tape on it. Inside, up here, you have two, two hard drive bays. They have little flip outs, and you just pull them out, and they kind of come out. This one falls down and just as I said OCZ Solid State 2 120 gig. SATA 2, that's the thing. Can't do SATA 3 on the Power Mac G5. SATA 2. My CD-ROM is the old IDE. Uh, it's a DVD burner optical I stuck in here so it would still work with the door and my Morph OS Butterfly just fell off. Uh, the Wi-Fi module is in. I am going to check the voltage of the PRAM battery. And I just ground it out to the aluminum. 3.66 volts. That's that's pretty daggone good. Is that a rechargeable one? I don't know. Anywho, <clears throat> I'm a huge Macintosh fan of this kind of technology, this kind of era. When they did enterprise networking and XServes and XServe raids and all that stuff, that's my favorite era of Apple. Even the classics, the Quadras, the pre-Steve and the Steve era. That's my favorite. Tim era, yeah, I have one. Not so much a fan as I used to be. And if you know my email address, it's kind of ironic because of what I do in the Amiga world. Okay, enough chitter chatter. I'm going to plug this hard drive back in. Speakers in the front, so I didn't. And everything's modular. Power buttons all the here. This monstrosity at the bottom, this whole plate comes off, and underneath is a 600 watt power supply. This is a dual 1.8. Came with originally 1 gig and 160 gig hard drive. R9600 and a 56K modem. So, for possible upgrades after I fire this up, I have a choice of different hard drives. I don't know if they're going to work. Crucial, 250 gig, possible. I don't know if they're SATA 3. Intel, SATA, 120 gig, SSD. Crucial, 2 terabyte, doubt it. SanDisk, SSD plus, 120 gig, doesn't say if it's SATA 3, SATA 2. So, last but not least, 500 gig rotational Western Digital 16 meg cache. We'll see. 
when I turn this on, we should hear a click if everything's good. Okay, that's the power supply unlocking its decouplers. I don't know if that's really it, but it sounds good. Hit it. Ooh, it's going to warm it up in here. This thing is a monster truck of heat. It's probably going to melt Omnibot. So this is my server hard drive. Which means I grabbed the entire wrong computer off of the shelf. Beautiful machine though. Love the construction and all the setup with this monster truck with the fans and the triple fans and the two fans behind here and the one up here. This thing is made to flow some air, a.k.a. the nickname, the cheese grater. Be right back. Holy crap. Whew. Sorry, I'm out of breath. These are like 70 pounds. You want to see what happens when you pull these things out? Listen, watch. A red light comes on here and she starts flowing some air. This was a 160 gig Intel 320. So this is my Morph OS drive. There's Ambient. Holy crap. It has supercharged my display into something I don't even remember. This is Morph OS 313 registered to me. 313. So they're on 318. All right, Morph OS is a, I don't give two craps about shutting down. It's just off. Boom. All right, let's see what the hell happens. I'm going to power this on and stick my finger in here. Ah. There we go. Morph OS 318 in the drive. Daddy. We'll see what she gets. There's the butterfly. 318, power max 7.2, 1,729 megabytes of RAM. That's it. Mr. Hold Modify said, that's a lot of aluminum that could be recycled for better things. I said, so is your 4,000, bitch. Damn! Here's the boot CD, RAM disk, networks, my Morph OS. All right, we're going to do installation. All right, so this is installing, and Mr. Hold Modify, Kevin Q, is uh, complaining at me because this is in Mac, and he didn't use Macs because of Lightwave. But I said, if possible, I said... I will run Lightwave on Morph OS just for spite. And he said, I will leave nasty comments. Okay, so we're rebooting. I just copied Lightwave 5 to Morph OS. It's an Amiga program, but I want to see if it runs on Morph OS using some 68K magic. I don't know. The G5s are running at a cool 60 degrees Celsius. 672 by 432. That is an oddball resolution. Last frame 90. I don't know. I like to see a preview. Yes, it is making the preview and it does do the fly around. I'd have to figure out the Mode Pro render screens on this, but it's nice to see that this old software actually works and it's rendering pretty quick for the preview. It's kind of neat. I would love to see how it actually renders in real time, but. Got a neat end preview. Now there's a war between OS4 and Morph and 68K and it doesn't matter to me, I use them all. We are rocking Eagle Player, the Amiga program. Nothing special done here. Um, when you install it, it's gonna lock up on Morph OS if you load a music mod. So I'm gonna show you a trick, what I did to get it working. If you even give two craps. So in Morph OS, when you load Eagle Player before you play a music mod, Click up here to Engines, go to 14-bit Amplifier and disable it. And then enable AHI Amplifier and choose Show. Next you're going to choose Global so it sets all the channel voices. Set AHI Mode and I chose the second one which was Apple I2S Hi-Fi 16-bit Stereo++. Plus Plus. Once you do that, again go to Config, Save Config. OK, quit the app, and then restart it. Now, another thing I noticed is it doesn't like the icon. So, in my Eagle Player 2 directory, I switched to all files, and I deleted the icon file. I don't know why it doesn't like it, but leaving it with a default little whatever this is, it then works. Sometimes you have to restart 
uh, the Morpho S machine, it boots in like 20 seconds, so you're good there. And then you have Eagle Player working. Now I'm running off the Apple internal little tiny speaker, which is that little sucker right here. So if I plugged it into some audio, like the Davoom Tivu or something like that, we can get a little bit better sound. So I have audio. Now this speaker's nothing to shake a stick at, but it works. I really enjoy Morph OS, and I know Mr. Matt 3K would be extremely happy that I'm doing a Morph OS video. Another small update, I made a batch file basically, or a text file with the SMBFS Morph OS commands, which I had to look up because I am SMB1, so I can't do the view connect and type the SMB stuff in. Like if I type it, X serve 2, volume name, MP3s. Login me, my password, go. Nothing happens. I had to write the text command, which does the same thing and execute it. So now I can finally drag a bunch of crap over to this big DH3 drive. I got music mods and directory opus and eagle player and I can put some cool backdrops on here now. And Success, I got SMB mounter from Rob Cranley working. The trick with Morph is when you go into your preferences, it has to be Moss Sys C for the paths and the SMBFS 1 or 2, whatever you're doing. Uh, you could do SMBFS on here, it has two listed. So I have SMB2FS and SMBFS, and that works. So now I just have native icons that work. And if I eject them, I can go up to the eject menu. Oh, come on. And eject it. And then if I run the SMB mounter, come on, close. Eh. You'll see it pop right here when I double click on this. Sorry, it's so small. Mount. There we go. It just works. We are 96% full on this volume. So that's SMB mounter. There's so many things that work on Morph OS. You can pick these old G5s up a dime a dozen now. This thing was $3,000 when it was brand new in 2005, three. I know, it's an old Power Mac, but the quality and the craftsmanship of these older Macs was legendary. The way they architecturally made airflow in little bits and pieces, it's like German engineering, it's awesome. And I love this brand of machines. Lots of fun, especially with Morph OS now. Make yourself a modern day Amiga. Another tip I forgot to tell you is after you do your eye control, when you do your screens and desktops, you can drag these off window, like boop. Um, I was setting up my stuff, I forgot to turn on disc catching. So if you do cache down here, it's got like a superhero with a butterfly on it. Just take off DH0 or any volume you wanted to cache. I got 128 megs of RAM, Wayfarer. I also set it to open uh, with a balanced cache and it, it helps it load so much faster. You can play with this unlimited time, like 30 minutes it slows down, just reboot. And then you can run it for free forever if you really want to support the team, which I highly suggest you do. Uh, the registration info is done in Morph OS. You submit your email address, they'll send you an actual email on your real PC with your key file and all that stuff. You copy it into the little devs and uh, reboot and you're legally licensed. I bought this one years ago it's bound to this MAC address. If this machine ever dies, I can transfer it. I might just buy an additional one. I want to get a better Power Mac G5, one of the PCI Express ones, so I can do a way better video card and some other enhanced duhiculars and goodness. So one other thing you can do on Morph OS is go to Morph OS Storage, which is Morph OS. I'm not calling it OS, okay? It's Morph OS, not Morph OS. I hate that. Morph OS-Storage.net. So, that's kind of like the aminette of the Morph Easy Installer. Well, suck a dog. Here it is, January 13th, 2024. Now we can choose what you want. Please acknowledge the type of system. Amiga OS 3, 4, Morph, 1, 2, or 3, AROS, AROS, three different flavors of AROS. Wow. Continue. It's a package manager. Morphos updates. Let's see what updates we have. This is brand new to me. We have a Wayfarer version, Iris version, TinyGL, and OpenSSL. 
Awesome. So we're going to just... I'll do this. I already did open F, uh, open SSL library. So I have all the updates. 7.2. Oh, I need an iris update. Download, install, and extract the archive automatically. Great. Downloading the update. It's all searchable by category or developer. Installing it automatically. So my new iris will be there. Boom. Sweet. Iris is the email client, by the way. Yes. Google, Outlook, Office 365, Yahoo, IMAP, all sorts of stuff. And it works perfectly. Automatic updates is awesome. The new easy installer is like a package manager on Linux. That's the basic, that's what I can describe it as. And it works pretty good. Now, I am running a little slower because I am on rotational media. Alright, I was jamming a Slayer, ran in blood. Um, I'm downloading demos, so it's got a loot on here, all sorts of stuff. If I want to download Machinist, I just click download, or I can say install, or whatever. So I'm going to go to DH3, demos, and there it goes. It'll just go across, and you're downloaded. When you're done, go to your drive. Let's see how one runs. I've never done this before. We're going to load... Uh, dust. So we're going to extract it. I'm just going to extract it right here. Put it in the folder. Let's hit it. Rendering output window. Can I make this big? Remember I'm in 1920 by 1080. That's just doing it. I get to watch the demo. I'm in way high over, higher of a resolution. So I'm watching lewd demos. Alright, here's one of my other favorite ones. This is the Morpho S version of Elude We Come in Peace. This is a pretty intensive Amiga demo. Functions exactly the same. Love this demo. Little credits, little light ball goes down the tube. Great demo. Now this is zoomed in big time. This easy installer has really opened up a new world for 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 Morph OS in my eyes because I was doing the chrysalis packs. You had to wait once a year, and now I can just click a category. All right, so I'm just chatting with Mr. Matt 3K about Morph OS. You know he runs his whole business on this thing. I don't know what he does, but he runs his whole business on Morph OS. Dual screens and stuff. I kind of got him hooked on it, and then he turned into the Jedi Master with this thing. So, kind of neat. When you live and breathe something, you get to learn it a lot more. When you use it periodically, a couple times a year, you really don't get the enthusiast level satisfaction of it. But I'll tell you what, this new easy to install Morph OS. If they bundle this with the installer, it's gonna make this thing night and day. Because now. Instead of hunting for stuff, you can just choose a package manager like Linux. I want a Games Shooter 3D. Here's Doom 3 from Cowcat. Looks pretty good. If Amiga OS had this, some kind of link for Eminent, wow, it'd be great. That's why you need a massive sys folder, which I did second time around. I loaded her up with uh, 100 gig. Figured that'd be cool. Amiga Amp. There it is. Load your AHI. Perfect. MPEG 3 program. AHI unit 0. Whoa. 
Now you can also double click an MP3. You don't need an MP3 player morph. It just sucks it up to the bar up here. So if I would double click on this, it goes right up here. So I'm watching demos on Morph OS here. These things are freaking wild. Like wild. To get them, I'm using the easy to install. I just highlight something I want to watch and hit install and it just does it and it works. These are custom made you know, demos for Morph OS from Encore and many of the other groups like Elude has a bunch and a lot of Amiga demos run on this thing just fine. But it's nice to see the hardware, power PC stuff for these really showing off what it can do. More fever. Pretty cool, huh? You're done, hit escape. All full screen or windowed. It's got a lot of black and white in this one, but pretty cool how they do things. Sound is running off my Davoom Tivu here. Face pokes up here, it's really cool. Watch this. Twenty twenty three. Wow. Pretty neat. So that's a uh, Morph OS three one eight or three dot eighteen. It's come a long way. You guys should give this a check out. 
you don't have an old Power Mac G4, G5, you can get the, the old iMacs G5s, G4s, and they run fine. There's a whole listing of compatible machines on the Morph OS team website. I'll link it down below. This is a 1.8 Dual that I got 20-something years ago. Anyway, that's all I got for now. Thanks for checking out Morph OS with me. And until next time, thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something. Funny, you bastard.